Grüß dich, I'm Ashley Foster. And I am this Laura Antilli. Today we want to talk about a group of very special volunteers who work hard with handlers and dogs to achieve their goals, from the lowliest IPO one club trial to the heady heights of the World Championships. They turn up every week, be it baking sun or bleak midwinter. Their single motivation is to help their clubs. They take no financial incentive. While the same could be said for head trainers, track layers, various committee members, event organisers, trial secretaries and whoever it is who makes the tea, without the helper, there is no IPO. And with no IPO, there is no IP observations. What's the first image that comes to mind when you think of IPO? Even though IPO has three distinctly different phases, I'd assume for most people it'd be something like this. Helper and dog, locked in combat. While this image is instantly recognisable and seems straightforward on the surface, most people might sum it up simply as dog bites the bad man. Like most things in IPO, there is a lot more going on between the dog and helper. So what is the helper's job and why do we do protection work in the first place? To quote the SV on the purposes of protection work, Protection training is one of the basic requirements for the preservation of the German Shepherd breed in her quality, though neither the training nor the sport itself represents a threat to the general public. Rather, the opposite is true, by being active in protection dog sport creates a psychological balance that is required of the animal. The requirement of targeted protection dog training is therefore based on the inner connection between drive predisposition, resilience and self-confidence, not to be confused with fear aggression and sharpness. The helper is a safe conduit for my natural protective instincts, allowing me to let off steam and practice using my aggression in a controlled manner. And when this guy is a conduit for your aggression, like a personal punching bag, you're in for a good time. Am I right, ladies? So saying the purpose of protection dog training is to teach a dog to bite is like saying the purpose of dancing is to move around. It's more like a Zen martial art, teaching the dog how to use its immense inner strength to actively overcome an adversary whilst being able to control its emotions and stay obedient to its handler. Therefore, the ultimate purpose of a helper is to challenge a dog's physical and mental abilities, but the primary responsibility of a helper is first and foremost safety. The German Shepherd Dog League of Great Britain's working branch holds an annual helper licensing event, bringing helpers from all over the UK together for two days of training, testing and of course, licensing. Novice helpers Helpers will get a chance to work with experienced dogs provided by GSDL working branch clubs whilst being tutored by experienced GSDL helpers. If the novice helpers are deemed proficient enough to be licensed, they can be put forward to take their B grade test under the GSDL judge, which involves answering questions regarding the rules and routines of IPO 1, 2 and 3, demonstrating a basic level of fitness and most importantly of all, an ability to catch and work dogs correctly and safely eliminating as much risk of injury to the dog and helper as is reasonably possible. A helper who achieves the B grade is then licensed to work dogs in club trials for three years, after which they must be tested again to reapply for their license. Once a B grade helper has worked 10 dogs at a club trial level, they are permitted to take the A grade test, which is more difficult than the B grade, but once passed makes the helper eligible to work dogs in large events like World Championship Team Qualifiers and National Championships. The helper licensing system is a good way of maintaining a high degree of physical safety during protection work, but what about the training of the the dog itself. A good training helper is an extremely rare thing as it requires a huge variety of highly specialised skills and a natural feel for dogs, especially in the early phases of bite development. I like to think of their job in the early phase as an energy investor. Imagine the helper is an investor who has a limited supply of money and the young dog is a prospective business that needs money to get going. In the first few months of partnership, the investor will have to put more money into the business than the business will produce in profit to keep it afloat. Eventually, if the business is fundamentally good, it will start making a profit that it can pay back to the investor in returns. Ultimately, the investor hopes to make more money out of their investment than they paid in. If you think of the money as energy, the helper needs to be very active and put more energy into the initial stages of puppy bite development to keep the dog interested and ignite its drives. Once the dog learns to become active against the helper in protection, the helper can then slowly switch to a more passive low energy mode, only activating when attacking or attempting to escape from the dog. Like I said in IP Observations Episode 1, again, it's quite easy for a dog to actively engage with an active helper, but IPO protection work tests a dog's commitment against helpers that are active and passive. A good basic mantra for training a dog in protection work is active dog, reactive helper. 
Ultimately, we want a dog to confidently take control of the situation on command, as the helper does not initiate aggression in a trial. The training helper also needs to have the ability to challenge a dog while simultaneously teaching them how to win with confidence. To be able to recognise the mental state of a dog by reading subtle changes in body language and be ready to adjust their own body language accordingly. To be able to teach a dog how to fight the helper whilst maintaining a clean, calm and firm grip on the sleeve. To be more concerned with why a dog is doing something rather than how it is doing it. They also need to have good communication skills to cultivate successful working relationships with the people they train with. There will be as many different opinions on what makes a good helper as there are helpers, but those are just a few examples of key skills that I can personally think of. There's way more to it than I can possibly fit into one video. So next time you see a helper, give them a hug or something, because they do a tough job. If you're in the UK and are interested in taking part in the GSDL helper licensing event, contact our helper coordinator, Helen Gein, for details. As always, thanks for watching and supporting this series. We've reached well over 60,000 people around the world so far thanks to people sharing these videos on Facebook, forums and blogs. Thanks again. See you later, humans. Tschüss.